have you welcome the newest inductee to the USABA Hall of Fame, David Beaver. About 36 years ago, in the winter, I was a social professor at Moorhead State University in Kentucky. I was coaching wrestling, <clears throat> good team, and um, I was a professor in the physical education department. I happened uh, to be reading and thumbing through my professional journal, the American Alliance for Health, Physical Education, Recreation, and Sport. There was a very, very, very small advertisement in there, probably an inch tall and maybe two and a half inches wide in a column. And all it said was that athletes that were blind were going to be competing at the Toronto Olympiad, or yeah, the Toronto Olympiad that summer, and that the organizers were looking for coaches. Well, I had, at that time, two young men on my wrestling team that were both very low vision. I mean, one was so low that to read this big, t he would have to have newsprint on his nose practically to be able to read it. I applied. Didn't know who I was applying to because there was only a post office box. It turned out to be Dr. Charles Buell. Judy White coached the swimming team in, in Toronto from the Indiana School for the Blind. Lou Moneymaker had the track team. I had the wrestlers along with a gentleman from Arkansas by the name of uh, Leonard Ogburn. In fact, somewhere out here, I saw him come in earlier. I see Dr. Jim Mastro, where are you? <laughs> and Jim was on that team. And we successfully defeated the Canadian national wrestling team of blind athletes and the York University sighted wrestling team. And we were trying to prove that that was a sport that should be part of the program of competition. Well, the last meeting of the time in Toronto, it turned out that uh, we were in the beer tent, of all places, uh, but training was over, competition was over, and it turned out that the three coaches had all been telling our particular protégés in our respective sports the same thing. If you're really serious about wanting to be an athlete and be ready the next time we come around, four years from now, I'll help you. They'll help you. Because two months later, we had an organizing meeting in Kansas City in which there were 30-some-odd individuals, both sighted and visually impaired, totally blind, some educators, some business people, but you know, all had a vested interest in athleticism. And out of that meeting, we formed the United States Association of Blind Athletes. It's a pleasure to be here. I feel very, very honored to receive this award. Since I retired in the decade of 2000, I've been getting awards like this, or distinguished alumnus from Greeley and Northern Colorado and Springfield College. So I said, I think they're telling me my time has had it. Watch out. I'm all paid up in my insurance, but it's time for me to go. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>